In the name of Jesus. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, so far in our season of Lent, we have been looking at a series of trees, specific, literal trees, in the biblical narratives. On Ash Wednesday, we looked at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. Then the next week, we looked at Abraham and the oaks of Mamre. Last week, we looked at Gideon and the great terebinth of Ophrah. Tonight's tree, though, is a bit different. The tree that we see tonight is more of a figurative tree, what we call a family tree. And we, are under, we are all understand what a family tree is. This is the family tree of a man named Jesse. Jesse, who is the father of David, the great king of Israel, and therefore Jesse is the father of a long line of kings. This reading from Isaiah chapter 10 and 11 usually comes in Advent, speaking of a little child that shall lead them into an era of peace. This shoot that will spring up from the stump of Jesse, this little child is the babe of Bethlehem, the king who has come to be all that David was and much, much more. But as a Lenten reading this evening, we also hear a call to repentance. It says, The great in height will be hewn down. The lofty will be brought low. This great family tree of Jesse's line has been cut down, not by enemy nations, not by pagan rulers, but by God himself. God's chosen people would be cut off from his good and gracious gifts. And instead, they would be the recipients of his wrath and judgment. Isaiah prophesies that Israel, had, Israel and Judah would suffer greatly, not only at the hands of their enemies, but also by the will of God. He would cut them down. He would bring them low. God's judgment of sin and of sinful people is, is real. God will not abide over sin or ignore it. Unrepentant sin leads to death and destruction. Always. Every time. This is a sobering thought for us, or it should be. Us, who often take God's good gifts for granted. Us, who assume God's mercy and grace will prevail over our selfish and our sinful desires. We say, Jesus loves me, this I know, therefore I can do whatever I want, and God will continue to love me without any consequence for my sin. Or so we think, anyway. If this is your thought regarding God, if you think that God's judgment and wrath is really just a fiction, and that he really doesn't care how you live or what you do, well then look no further than the stump of Jesse. Jesse's great family tree, designated for the greatness of the kings of Israel, is reduced to a stump. The stump that remains of Jesse's tree is proof positive of God's judgment, that the sin of God's people will not be ignored nor will it go unpunished. Isaiah's message to Israel then, to us this Lenten season, is, is one of warning and repentance. Isaiah says, turn from your evil ways. Turn from your wickedness. Continue in these ways no longer. Or we too may be struck down and left as a stump where a great tree was once planted. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there are places all over the world, I'm thinking specifically in Europe right now, where there are great cathedrals, great places of worship that once existed. And where these great cathedrals stand, there are no people in these churches any longer. You see, these churches, these cathedrals, are merely stumps of the great congregations of saints that were once there, that once 
heard the word of God and worshipped the Lord there. But because these congregations allowed sin and unbelief to permeate their teachings and their doctrines, because these congregations allowed the world to permeate their walls, well, now they are a mere remnant of what, of what they once were. Jesus says in John chapter 15, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. Now certainly, if these words stood by themselves, it would be very hopeless for us. God's wrath and his judgment of sin is, in fact, very real, and we should be rightly terrified, for we are not guiltless. But this is why this reading from Isaiah chapter 10 and 11, read during Advent, and in, in this case during Lent, brings us to repentance. And this repentance also brings with it a hope, a hope to give us a reason for the hope that we have. Christ, the descendant of Jesse and King David, comes as a budding branch of God's promises to his people. In Christ, life springs forth from death, and God's mercy and grace do prevail over his wrath and destruction. The Lord will still punish the sins of his people, but rather than pour all his wrath out on Israel or Judah or on us for that matter, it is poured out instead on his Son, Jesus Christ. On his cross, Jesus is cut down. Jesus is humbled and diminished from being the Son of the Almighty God to being a stump of suffering of a dying man. Jesus is cut off from his Father as he cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We, what we deserve for our sin, Christ suffers for us. And it is precisely by his suffering and death that life springs forth. It is in this stump of Jesse that we find within this cross of wood a tree of life with every good. And this life is eternal life for you and for me. And it is born out of this cross of wood. And so Jesus becomes a shoot springing forth, a righteous branch, so that all who abide in him, who trust in his sacrifice for our salvation, will abide in life, eternal life, abundant life. Yes, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a life that is full of joy. It is full of peace. Peace with our Creator and our God. It is a life that bears fruit for the kingdom of God. The fruit of abiding in Jesus is abiding in His peace. Peace with God, then, is also peace with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. It is a peace that the world cannot give. It is a peace that surpasses all understanding. But it is peace nonetheless. It is peace that can only come from the forgiveness of sins that is given freely for us by the suffering and death of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. In this peace, Isaiah says that wolves will lie down with goats. Leopards will lie down and play with young lambs. The calf and the lion and the fattened calf will dwell in this supernatural peace. We have peace because our enemies are defeated. Our enemies of sin, death, and the power of the devil. The love of God which is shown to us in our Savior, our Savior who is this branch from the stump of Jesse, who has been cut down for you, Yes, as Jesus says, greater love has no one than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. By God's grace, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the stump of Jesse is not our heritage, and destruction is not our fate. Rather, 
we are grafted into the vine of Christ, not branches in a long line of kings, but rather we are citizens under the reign of the King of Kings, eternally, abundantly, forever. And so in the words of the hymn, Christ the shoot that springs triumphant from the stump of Jesse's tree, Christ true vine, you nurture branches to bear fruit abundantly. Graft us into you, O Savior. Prune our hearts so we remain fruitful branches in your vineyard till eternal life we gain. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may this, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.